What's going on guys? Today I'm out here working on my Jeep, trying to figure out a problem that I've been dealing with for a while now. I think a lot of people deal with it. Um, as you can tell, I got my front drive shaft out here. I was gonna film it, but then again, I really have no idea what I'm doing. So I didn't wanna go show you guys how to do something, and I don't even know how to do it. So watch a quick YouTube video, and uh, like always, it doesn't really go as smooth as a YouTube video goes. So when you're taking out your front drive shaft, on the axle side right there you got a couple clips with two bolts on each side holding it in well those were a pain because they're rounding off on me with this uh 11 16 that's what the youtube video said to use well a quick post on the good old xj forum um, a lot of people told me to use what is this uh 5 16 socket instead a six point it works a lot better i popped those bolts off with a little bit of wd-40 and some heat so i heated those bolts up and um, they came off no problem I got those bolts off no problem this side was a little bit difficult because you got to use a pry bar to keep the drive shaft from spinning so yeah i got the drive shaft out um it was a success probably only took me about 20 minutes but the whole reason why i did this is because i'm trying to find out why my drive shaft is vibrating like crazy and a lot of the times when you don't have a slip yoke eliminator kit or a transfer case drop bracket which is just a space between your cross member and your unibody you'll get some vibrations well I have a slip yoke eliminator on this Jeep and it should drive great. So I was under there and my front drive shaft had a lot of play. So I just took it off and I'm going to hop in the Jeep, go for a ride, go down to the gym and um, see if it makes a difference. If not, I don't know. We'll keep on chasing it. But besides the green Jeep, heading on to the Jeep everyone loves. I currently have the body armor and flares down at the paint shop right now. They're getting painted up. Stay tuned to see how they come out because I think they're going to come out great. It's been a long time coming. I've been slacking on it. But I finally got the body armor down in the paint shop. I'm going to throw that on as soon as it gets back. Although, I don't think that's as easy as it sounds, too. From my understanding, the body armor can just rivet into the side of your body here. And uh, I don't know, that just kind of terrifies me. So we're going to see. Ever since I bought this Jeep, it's had these green valve covers, which are cool, kind of. But it's never been my style. I really don't like the green with the red. Um, so... I got me a set of new valve covers. Those are in the trunk. The valve covers are on. Then I can finally show you guys the final product instead of boring you with the details on how to take off a valve cover because it's pretty straightforward. Although the more I'm looking at this, I might need to take my coil packs out just so I can get a little bit easier access to those bolts right there. Plus this comes straight out because there's studs right down there. So this valve cover actually has to lift up a little bit. So I think I might, you know, this stuff I can move out of the way, but I'm going to have to move all this. But yeah, I'll show you guys when that's all done, because who wants to watch me take a valve cover off? That's what we got going on today. Um, I also want to tear apart my throttle body in the green Jeep, clean it out with some carb cleaner, clean the IAC as well, because I'm getting really bad gas mileage with this Jeep. If you guys don't know, my best friend Josh has that other red Jeep that looks almost identical to this one that was the project we picked up we picked up last year around this time i bought it for like 500 bucks since then we've done so much work to it trying to get it running right then we put a lift kit on it swapped the tires over now it looks incredible and it had a whole bunch of body work done resprayed and it looks really nice where was i going with that oh yeah so in the process of trying to get that thing to run right we replaced basically everything fuel and spark related so that jeep gets excellent gas mileage it's peppy, it's quick, it's everything you want out of a lifted Jeep. And a lot of people get comfortable with the fact that it's a Jeep, it's lifted, it's gotta get poor gas mileage, right? Well, that's wrong too. That's a myth that people don't really um, wanna dive into because although it is a lifted Jeep and it's probably only gonna get like 15 to 20 miles per gallon, at best, you want your engine running at its optimal performance. So there's a couple tips later on in this video that I'm gonna show you that'll help you improve your gas mileage on your XJ. 4.0, whatever, really kind of goes along with any vehicle when you think about it. All right, so I just got down into town and picked me up a new gasket for my throttle body. If you guys plan on cleaning your throttle body, always pick one of these up because it always breaks. Replace it, it's like $4. Um, yeah, so I got that. Also ordered a... Oil pressure, yeah, oil pressure sending unit to see if that helps my low oil pressure issue. I had purchased one in the past about four months ago and it was from AutoZone, junk. Pretty sure there's something going on with that. 
the oil pressure only idles at 10 psi yeah i went and spent 120 dollars on an oem mopar oil pressure sending unit we'll see if that makes a difference if not uh yeah we got bigger issues i'm hoping that's it if that's not it then i have to drop my oil pan and check the oil pump and the screen hope i don't have to do all that because i'm going on a road trip going camping at the end of the month and I want to be able to take this as far as the front drive shaft vibrations that's gone except I got this thing up to like 75 and normally I can do like 80 90 no problem floats drives like a Cadillac but for some reason the wheel started shaking old Jeep was shaking I don't know what's going on with that and then I noticed in the rear actually I'll get out and just show you guys all right don't mind the crustiness it's a Northeast Jeep anyway that shim right there was added before I had my slip yoke eliminator kit. And it's when I had the drop brackets. And I'm pretty sure when I had those installed, the shop forgot to remove them. I don't know, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you don't need those if you had the slip yoke eliminator kit. This side still has the shim. Then on this side, looks like it's like broken in half. I don't know if you can really tell, but yeah, I know it's really crusty. Don't mind me, I haven't done anything to this jeep so yeah broken shim on this side i don't really know if that matters though i don't see that causing a shake in my drive line but who knows i'm not a mechanic i've said that before i did have a shop install the slip yoke eliminator kit so there's a possibility they forgot to do something i'm just gonna be safe and bring it back to that shop sometime probably next week and they can figure it out because right now i have my front drive shaft out i didn't mark it so I don't want to mess with that. I'm going to go bring this Jeep to the shop, have the front drive shaft and the pinion seal done, as well as address the terrible shake it has on the highway. But yeah, I'm going to get home, clean my throttle body. It can't hurt, but I'm curious to see if that will give me better gas mileage, more throttle response. I don't know. It just needs to get done. I've never done it. So yeah, we're going to go do that. Just got home. Going to tear the Jeep apart. I'm going to take the throttle body apart and uh clean inside there it's pretty simple you just got to disconnect um these cables here a couple bolts on this side you got to take off these sensors don't forget these washers here throttle bodies out i'm gonna get this gasket off this is why i said earlier to go buy a new one because it breaks so yeah now we can clean it so i got my throttle body taken off here there's a few things you got to take off as well this is your map sensor bottom of it goes into that little rubber plug there don't want to forget that i just took all these off so i don't get them wet when i'm cleaning it so map sensor this is your IAC, your idle air control. And as you can tell, it's pretty scummy. We're gonna get the toothbrush and throttle body cleaner out, clean this thing up. So all you need is some carb cleaner and a toothbrush. I can't wait to see if this does anything. Like gunked up, this is so bad. Yummy. Got it shined up looking a little bit better. I probably should have just brought, bought a new one. So I was able to get this thing pretty clean. Throttle body's clean. IAC's clean. Now we can throw these back in. So you want to remember too, this O-ring. Sometimes it can get lost. If you replace it, just make sure you put it back on. I got all my sensors put back on. All right, now that everything's back together, all my sensors are plugged in, got my air filter hooked back up. You wanna double check, make sure all your sensors are actually in. Don't forget that little rubber piece on the bottom of your map sensor. Connect all your wires, all your cables. The most important part after this, if you wanna disconnect your battery terminals, you wanna to touch them together and hold them together for about a minute. 
and this will reset your computer. Anytime you do anything with sensors, you gotta do that. Doubt I'm gonna notice any difference right off the bat, but I just like to go for a ride just to make sure everything's running good. No engine lights. Right, we'll do a little zero to 60 test, just flooring it. Not sure if that even did anything to help it to improve gas mileage or whatever but it definitely didn't hurt it it needed to be done the inside of that throttle body was really black and gross as well as that iac so only time will tell unfortunately i'm not going to be able to hop in this and probably notice any difference but over time maybe i'll get better gas mileage but it gives me peace of mind knowing that's already done now i won't have to do that for a while i'd say you probably have to do that every like 10,000 miles That'd be my guess. I don't know. That's going to do it for today, guys. I uh, appreciate you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see in future videos. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.